Have you ever felt that God's will and your desire are at odds with one another? You, you know, you feel you know what God's will is, but then when you look at what you want, it seems to be something outside of God's will. So you're in this very sticky situation where you're wrestling with what you should be praying for, how you should view the world, how you should craft and design your dreams and your goals. Should you stick with what God's will is, but yet it doesn't align with your desire? Or should you move over to this side and try as much as you can to force God to accept your desires as a means of making your life more fulfilled and more pleasurable and more enjoyable? This is the kind of place that we find ourselves whenever we're praying. Sometimes we are in positions where we know that things that we're praying for are not within God's will, but we we kind of wish that God would make a slight adjustment in what his will is. And we sometimes get the impression that we can pray these things in a way that would invoke or maybe should we say encourage God to uh, adjust his will somewhat to fit within our plans or our desires. Well, what we're going to find here is when we pray, the best thing for us to do is to pray within the will of God. And the only way to know the will of God is by knowing the word of God. And so there are four things that I have identified that is the will of God. And these four things, if we ever pray these things, will always be praying in the will of God. The first thing that we find that is the will of God is that we as his believers be unlike the world. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Paul wrote, Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So when we think about what God's will is, well, God's will is that we as his people would be unlike the world. So anytime we pray any prayer that leads us into the position of being less like the world, we know we are always praying in the will of God and God is sure to answer a prayer that is within his will. The second thing that God wills for us is that we as his people would remain thankful in all things. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, Paul wrote, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Now, the important part in this verse is that Christ Jesus part, because that in Christ Jesus formula or belong to Christ Jesus formula that we see here is something that motivates God's will for creation that we'll see a little later, a little later on. But the third thing that God wills for his people is the sanctification, that we be sanctified. In First Thessalonians chapter four, verse three through verse five Paul wrote, God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. So we see that God wants us to be sanctified. There is a difference between the way people who are in the Christ community are to live when compared to those who are in the quote unquote, Gentile community, which is to say the pagan community. So now, so far, we have seen that there are three things that God wills for his people. The first is that his people exist unlike the world. The second thing is that his people live in thankfulness. The third is that his people live sanctified. And lastly, God's will for his people is that we live honorably. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 15 Peter wrote, it is God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. Here, Peter is speaking to the importance of living in subjection to authorities. And he quite simply states the idea of living as God's people means living honorably. So while others may accuse you, your life will prove that their accusations must be false. Now, these are things that God wanted to do. And the question is, why would God want to do this? How are these four things in line with what God is trying to do ultimately and eternally? Well, what we find is that where God's will is, God's purpose 
abides. And so if we ever want to know what God's will is, we want to understand what is the thing that he purposed creation for. We find this answer in Ephesians chapter 3, and it helps us to understand why nothing in Scripture shows us that God's will is that we be rich, that we have uh, health, that we have happiness, that we have you know some sort of success. None of these things are identified as God's will, even though these are things that God's people can enjoy when they are in a covenant relationship with the Father. But notice that this is not the concentration. It's not the will that God is establishing for his people. The idea that God has by at least these four wills that we have just uh, covered is that God is creating a new creation. He is building a new people who will look unlike the people of the old creation, but rather would look more like him as the head of new creation. So as people of new creation, God wants us to be the ones who are unlike the world, who are living in thankfulness, who are living in uh, honor and who are living in sanctification. He wants us to do these things because we are the reflection of his image in this new creation that he is heading. And in Ephesians chapter three, we find that God did not just come up with this as a reaction or response to Adam's fall, but rather Christ is the aim and the goal of all creation. God wanted from the very beginning to create in his son a people for himself so that we will never have an opportunity to live within the limitations of Adam eternally, but rather through Jesus Christ, we might find our divine nature as Peter refers to it in his epistle. So in Ephesians chapter three, we find that Paul begins to write in verse one through verse six about this plan that God had from the very beginning. And the ultimate sign of God's sovereignty is not that he calls us to do these little micro things throughout the day, but rather the ultimate confirmation that God is truly in control of everything is that whenever he set out for his creation, a plan that is including the coming of his son, no matter what happened between the establishment of that plan and the fallen nature of humanity, God did everything he needed to do to make sure his son, Jesus Christ, reached this earth because that's exactly what he wanted to do from the beginning. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, I briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed his mysterious plan to me. As you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. Notice Paul states that the plan is regarding Christ because out of Christ come all these other wonderful things that expresses God's will and the manifestation of that will. He says in verse five, God did not reveal it to previous generations, but now by his spirit, he has revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets. He says in verse six, and this is God's plan. Both the Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Jesus Christ. Notice this is the new creation and the head of this new creation that I was sharing with you earlier. Paul continues in verse 9 through verse 11. He states, I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan God the creator of all things had kept secret from the beginning. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So when we think about what it means to be in the will of God, we think about uh, what God wanted to do through his son and how he did it and what that means to us as we are recipients of the blessings that have been afforded to us by the faithfulness of the son of God, Jesus Christ. Being a Christian is not so much about helping ourselves or being helped to this life that we have imagined or even created, but rather it's about denying ourselves to the point where we are submitting ourselves to 
to the image and the will of God that essentially makes us better than we could have ever imagined, but it requires us trusting in the God who moves among men through the power of his Holy Spirit. These are the things that we find in Scripture, and it is incredibly important to know that as it states in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 through verse 21, it is God that equips us to do his will. We're not doing his will on our own, but God himself is equipping us to do his good will. So friends, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you've gained anything from this video, please take a moment to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We'll be posting videos on this channel every single day as we're trying to grow this channel to 1 million subscribers in just one year. We would greatly appreciate your support. If you have a comment or something you'd like to say, please make sure you drop it in the comment box. It will help us all continue the flow of conversation as individuals come and view the video. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care and God bless.